Welcome to Manifest, hosted by international evangelist, teacher, and author, Perry Stone. Enjoy unique insight into prophetic and practical truth. It's time to feast on fresh manna, so get ready to be blessed and encouraged. And now, here is your host and teacher, Perry Stone. Today on the Manifest Telecast, we're going to continue a series that we started the past two weeks with Sharon Maloney that deals with overcoming addictions. What I'm going to do on the program today with the help of the Lord is to show you what I call the invisible side of an addiction, which is the spiritual demonic activity that can be connected to individuals who open up their mind to particular types of addictions. So in Revelation chapter 9, 20 through 21, we have some folks behind us who are part of our extreme ministry, part of our youth ministry. We have also have young people and adults who are part of that. We thank God for them. But on the screen is the scripture, Revelation chapter 9. I want you to look with me here. It says this, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, their sorceries, their fornication, or their thefts. Now this scripture is from the book of Revelation, and these are the last day sins that the entire world is going to be involved with. I want to show you a list of these sins and give you a brief explanation. Number one is they're going to worship false god, which is the sin, false gods. That's the sin of idolatry. Number two, they're going to murder. This is the sin of shedding innocent blood mentioned in the book of Proverbs. Number three, sorceries, and this does include all forms of occult activity. Number four would be the sexual immorality used by the word fornication there in Revelation 9, 21. And that, of course, uh, is all forms of fornication and sexual immorality. Number five is thefts, which is robbing and stealing. Now, it's this one word that I want to key up on here in the book of Revelation is the word sorceries, because in the New Testament, there are, there are different words used that are translated in the English Bible as the word sorceries. Now, in Acts chapter 8 and verse 9, it says that Simon the sorcerer bewitched the people of Samaria. And that word sorcery here is a Greek word for like magic. In other words, using uh, deception to deceive people. Then in Revelation 9 and 21, the men repented not of their sorceries. And then in Revelation 18 verse 32, Babylon, mystery Babylon the Great, deceive the nation with her sorceries is a totally different Greek word than is used in Acts 8 verse 9. This particular word is the Greek word pharmakia. And it's an interesting word because it's where we derive the English word pharmacy from. And of course, you know that pharmacies today do a lot more than just uh, have a place where people can come and get their uh, the legal medicine or the medicine to help them if they have heart problems or if they have a blood issue or different problems that doctors prescribe. prescribe. But it's also a place, you know, that where there's pharmacies which you can purchase other things. But however, the word, when I say the word pharmacy, you don't think of going and buying chips and milk at a pharmacy. What do you think of? You think of your medication that you purchase at a pharmacy or some form of, of the drugs that are there that uh, can assist you, uh, which, which is what they're supposed to do if they are medically prescribed by a doctor. However, there's a lot of people that are involved with meth and cocaine and certain types of pills that they make, uh, marijuana and even alcohol. And these forms, the, these form very strong addictive behaviors in individuals that change their personality and can actually cause a premature death. Now, again, pharmakia is the Greek word for sorceries in the book of Revelation. So in the last days, the pharmakia spirit is going to be a demonic power that's going to be spread throughout the entire earth and deceive the nations because drugs, illegal drugs, as we've talked about, the hardcore illegal drugs actually create a change in the brain, a change in your thinking, as Sharon Maloney shared with us last week. And this changes cause an individual's personality to change. Now, in the New Testament, five times um, the, gr the Greek Bible uses the word pharmakia and it's translated as either witchcraft or sorcery in the Bible. Galatians 5.20, Revelation 9.21, Revelation 18.23, Revelation 21.8, Revelation 22.15. Now, in its original context, it meant medication, but by implication, it refers to all forms of occult magic. 
In fact, even in the time that the New Testament was written, or let me go back, in the time that John wrote the book of Revelation, which is about 95 AD, this word pharmakia was used in connection with drugs that alter or change the mind. Now, these were used, there were certain types of drugs, some of them came from boiled roots or other things that were used in the time of... Um, what we call the Old or New Testament era, and they were used by witches and sorcerers. Now, the reason they were used by witches and sorcerers were what I'm going to share with you connected to a heathen temple. Okay, let's go back to the time of the Greeks, of the Romans, and let's go back to some of those old ancient temples. Here's what's taking place. The heathen worshipers had at their temples priests and priestesses. And what these individuals would do, they would set up idol gods. Well, a lot of people came with problems and they would, you know, give an offering, and then they would go see the priest and priestess to discover if there was something they can do about a particular problem that they had. And many times a concoction was made that actually involved uh, certain roots that were mixed uh, with wine, and the roots, uh, the, 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 the brew, I guess you could call it, the elixir from the roots, was mixed with wine, and the person drank it. Now, what happened was it would have a hallucinogenic effect, and, and they would feel this real heavy utopia and just we'd say today they got high and then they would get this uh, false counter word from the priest to the priestess and then they would walk out of the temple and go home now obviously when that those roots or what we'd call those hallucin uh, hallucinogenic uh, effects wore off of the person's mind they were back in the same condition they were in before same thing happens with drug addicts they get high to escape their problems or they think they're escaping their difficulties and then when they come down, they still have the same problem. So what happened is they would return to the temple to uh, meet with the priest or the priestess who would again get that same potion, mix it in with those uh, herbal roots, which again were actually drugs, mix it with the wine, they drink the wine and then they would get that high utopia again and they would go through this process until they would get addicted to coming to the pagan temple and giving their offering to the priest and priestess. So really... I hate to say it this way, but it was true. It was a moneymaker for the priest and priestess of these ancient, ancient temples. And this is where the pharmakia idea actually comes from, that pharmakia is connected not just to occult practices, but is also connected to what we call drugs. Now, in, in going back, uh, something else that I want to share with you, people today all over the United States and the world are medicating themselves, and this is the term used by doctors, medicating themselves with different types of drugs. Now, I want to say something to you that's very, very significant. When you begin to deal with drugs that alter the mind and alter your thinking, there are certain spirits that become connected to, uh, we know, idol worship and in the different nations where there are idols. There are certain strong demonic spirits that get connected to dictators. There are certain sins in the Bible that uh, we know that people can become demon-possessed by continually practicing those particular types of sins. And the illegal drugs that are not only in North America, Canada, Mexico, and all over the world are altering the minds of men and women. You have to understand something. Satan wants to keep you either so high that you can't feel the presence of God or so low that you can't hear from God. And so drugs are used in the, in the realm of our adversary to get people a false sense of security and a false sense of hope. And when the drugs are wore off, the spirit of hopelessness and isolation remains on that person. And then they go into what's called a severe oppression or a severe depression. And then when they get into the depression, what do they do? They go and get the alcohol again. They go and get the drugs again. And they repeat this cycle. Now, some people that we've talked to who are now free from drugs said they took drugs for the high effect and others, believe it or not, took drugs, drugs for the low effect or they call them uppers and downers. And the uppers were to pick them up and get them going. But see what happens is when the drug wears off, you're down again. And the downers were to kind of make you sleep all the time to where you didn't have to think about anything. Now, folks, here's the fact. You live on the earth and you live in this life. And you cannot be, go to the point where you medicate yourself where you're, not, you're so numb. You're either so high you can't feel the feelings of others or feel the love and the truth of God's Word, or you're so low that you're dulled out. And when the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, convict you, or touch you, you can't hear from Him. And so I believe, and I want everybody to hear me here because I'm about to give you a little revelation that I believe is from the Lord. 
Every nation of the world has a particular spirit that rules over that nation. If you go to the book of Daniel, you'll discover there was a prince of the kingdom of Persia and there was a prince of Grecia. These were principality spirits. And you can read about the principalities in the book of Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. These were principality spirits that ruled over cities, nations, and providences. For example, in Daniel chapter 12 and verse 1, Michael the archangel is the guardian of the nation of Israel. So he is the prince angel over that nation. Well, there are also demonic spirits that rule over entire nations. And I began to research a little bit years ago about American history, and I began to research about, about the United States in general, because what I wanted to know was, what is the main prince spirit ruling over America? And as I began to go back to the very early founding of America, and I went back to the use of tobacco, then the use of, of moonshine and alcohol, and eventually the use of cocaine. By the way, I'll tell you something. We have time in a moment about cocaine that most people don't know. And I, I realized something that, our spirit, our strongest demon in America is not a sexual spirit. Those have always been around. It's not a, uh, a murder spirit. That's always been around. Our main spirit in America is a spirit of addiction released through a principality called the pharmacia spirit, the spirit of sorcery or illegal drugs. Now, if you don't believe that, I'm going to give you some statistics, and these are from 2005 to 2010. 25% of Americans' deaths are drug abuse. 65% of abusers get alcohol access through family and friends. Drug addicts have 527,000 visits to the emergency room each year. 10,000 deaths a year are due to chronic alcohol. 50% of America of America of Americans have a person in their family or a friend they know that's abusing drugs and alcohol. Now think about that, 50%. 19.7 million Americans uh, use illegal drugs, and this is age 12 and over. 14,000 million uh, Americans smoke marijuana, or the old the term is pot. <laughs> they smoke pot. 2.4 million Americans are cocaine users, and that's age 12. Think about this and older. 1.1 million Americans use hallucinogenics. 265,000 Americans use crack cocaine. 192,000 uh, new users of meth occur each year. 500,000 deaths a year are related to drug abuse, which also, by the way, includes cancer and, and so on from uh, smoking, uh, lung cancer, throat cancer, and also drugs. And here's a real shocker that just stunned me. Eight, eight, in, among eighth graders in America, eighth graders, 52% have already tasted alcohol. Listen to this. Eighth graders, half of the American eighth graders have already tasted alcohol. 41% of eighth graders in America have already smoked. 20% of youth in America have already uh, smoked pot. Now, alcohol drinking. 51%, that's over one half of America, of those in the United States, drink alcohol. Now, I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to tell you something. On one of the programs, I'm going to reveal something to you that everybody I've ever talked to about this did not know about it. The alcohol and the wine, the way it was used in Jesus' day, is different than that of today. So on one of the programs I want you to watch because we teach our youth total abstinence from liquor and strong drink. But I'm going to give you later, not on this program, but later, why I teach that. Because I want to help you with knowledge. Knowledge has power in it. And, and the right kind of knowledge can change your situation. I've always said your revelation can change your situation. Among alcohol users, 6.6% go on a binge of five straight days of drinking or more. 13% of Americans who drink alcohol drove under the influence of alcohol last year. Tobacco use in America, 71 million people aged 12 and older use tobacco. Now listen, that's 30% of the American population smoke. 16% of pregnant women, and this is ages 15 to two, over, a little over 40, 16% of pregnant women smoke cigarettes. The cost of drug abuse, diabetes cost medically in America, this is, the, you know, everything connected with, with the problem of diabetes, cost $131 billion a year. Those hospitals dealing with cancer, and cancer cost us $171 billion annually a year. That's health care costs, lost earnings, etc. Drugs in America, drug abuse, let me make it clear, I'm not talking about the medicine that doctors give you for your heart or whatever, but drug abuse, are you ready for this, cost $484 billion a year. Now, what I'd like to take a moment is to go back and, and just share with you a little bit how that when you go back to this understanding of what a pharmacia spirit is, it's a spirit of sorcery. In Acts chapter 8, there was Simon the sorcerer 
who wanted to purchase the anointing to lay hands upon people from Simon Peter. And of course, Peter withstood him face to face. Then in Acts chapter 13, Elymas the sorcerer tried to stop a man from being converted to Christ. And of course, the apostle put a judgment on him. And when he put a judgment on him, the man went blind. And he, in fact, the apostle called Simon said his heart was not right with God and his money was going to perish with him. And then in Acts 13, uh, Elymas the sorcerer is called a child of the devil. Then there was the psychic of Philippi. If you'll read about this in Acts chapter 16, this was a woman that had what's called a spirit of divination. The word divination there in Greek is the spirit of Python. And uh, I don't have the time to go into detail that in this particular city where this woman was working, there was a big temple that had a, had a snake in it. And this is where the people would go thinking they were receiving a word from the gods, like an oracle from the gods. And so she was actually operating through a, a demonic spirit. Paul was so grieved in his spirit, he cast the devil out of this woman. Now, I'm sharing that with you to tell you that the New Testament had to deal with sorcery. And again, going back to what I said earlier in that particular day, it was the temples that provided the hallucinogenic drugs that were mixed in with roots through wine for people to drink to have all these highs and hallucinations. So it wasn't so much done on the street the way you see today with drug dealers. It was done in these pagan temples. And again, the root word for sorceries in the book of Revelation, pharmakia. And I said a moment ago, it's the pharmakia spirit, the drug addiction spirit that is controlling the entire United States of America. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but cocaine is very inbred in, the, in our society, Mex New Mexico, Canada, America, and also parts of the world. However, cocaine is not a new drug. In a book I have, it's a magazine, Life Magazine, May of 1984, it did a study called The History of Cocaine. In the 1800s, cocaine was derived, 1800s in America, from the cocoa plant and was advertised in papers as a sinus and headache medicine. <laughs> they claim it would, it would calm hysteria. In 1886, the New York Herald wrote that the whole town there in New York, one whole town, had now gone mad after cocaine. In 1891, coca wine was made for, for 23 years. It received the praise from three popes and 16 heads of states and 8,000 doctors, and it was wine with cocaine in it. In 1886, John Pemberton concocted a soda fountain formula made of water and coca-laced syrup along with a number of other secret ingredients, and it was called Coca-Cola. A lot of people may not realize this, and this is in Coke history, that the, the early Coke had was made from coca leaves and it had cocaine in it. And then uh, I think it was in, um, in the 1900s, I think it was 1903, uh, after a presidential commission started talking about the dangers of cocaine. The cocaine was taken out and caffeine was used in place of it, all right? So what I want to share with you, 1880, 1898 to 1902, in America, cocaine ec imports rose 40% while the population only grew 10%. So when I tell you folks, listen to me, that America has been involved with addiction. You think it's just the past 10, 20 years. You think it's since the 1970s or the 1960s with the hippie movement. It is not. We've been involved with addictions all the way back in the 1800s when cocaine was so popular. And one of the things I want to share with you quickly is that the Native American Indian has a lot of addiction to alcohol. And God bless them because they need to be free and they need to be delivered. And I want you to watch that program that will be later on during the series that deals with alcohol. I'm going to teach you some things I guarantee you most of you did not know. But watch this very carefully. Alcohol, how does it affect us? It affects us with a poverty, it affects us with a poverty spirit. Drunkenness and gluttonous leads to drowsiness and will clothe us with rags, Proverbs 23 and verse 21. Number two, it leads to a spirit of greed. What do I mean by that? Most of the time, dealers only sell drugs for the money. And I'm going to tell you a little secret that some of you don't know. Do you know the guys who are the kingpins over the entire drug industry in the world, most of them don't even take the own drug they, the, their own drugs they produce. They sell it for the money. And at least they've got enough sense not to even take the thing they produce because they know they'll get addicted to it and they know where it leads, but they'll give it to you and your kids to buy to make them addicted and dependent upon them. So you have greed and, and a spirit of poverty. And I will tell you, number three, there is a spirit of hopelessness that comes upon anyone who has been addicted by some form of a drug. And... Um, 
in the Bible, I'm going to give you uh, Luke 21, 34. This is a warning in the last days that Jesus is giving us. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unaware. Now, I do a lot of word studies, most of you know, but in, the, in, in this verse, the word drunkenness is methe, and there's something called methamphetamine, and there's an abbreviation that everybody in the United States knows of a drug called meth. And meth is a homemade drug that has all kinds of terrible chemicals in it that's deadly and dangerous. Meth labs blow up, you know, in the mountains of Tennessee all the time. And the Greek word for drunkenness means intoxication or an intoxicant of some form. And this intoxicant changes and alters your personality. So it's interesting and it may, you know, this could be total coincidence and I'm not going to add to the scripture and read it beyond what it is, but it's interesting that drunkenness has that kind of methe, which is the, the root of that word meth, is what we see that is the main problem. And didn't Jesus say in the last days, be careful for drunkenness or be careful of intoxication or be careful of any of those things. In other words, it's going to alter your personality and alter your mind. A lot of you watching me and a lot of our partners have told us, I have a son, I have a daughter, grandson, granddaughter who is addicted to drugs. And I want to say something to you. You've got to get to the point where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired. There are so many ways of receiving help to where you can be delivered and be set free from the bondage that you were in. God, imagine what it is. We had, a, we had a young girl that we know that got addicted to cocaine, very close friend of ours. And she said after about a year of being free, she did not know how messed up her mind, her thoughts, her feelings, and her emotions really were until she got totally free. It is the will of God, my friend, that you get free and understand you're in a spiritual battle and you're dealing with spirits. But Jesus Christ and the anointing of the Holy Spirit gives us authority over all of the powers of the enemy. So let me encourage you today to, to, to seek the Lord and call upon Him. He will help you. I know that He will. And we're going to come back with some more series on this subject. And I don't want you to just manifest, but I have a special offer from something we did recently that many of you have asked for. And watch this and I'll be back. Please give me your undivided attention. I have in my hands what is the most significant prophetic word of 2016, and I want to make it available to you. The message is from the International Prophetic Summit with myself, Bill Cloud, Jonathan Kahn, and Mark Biltz. I want to give you some of the titles of what you will hear when you receive the CDs or DVDs. I preached a message called The Return of the Babylonian Spirits Controlling America's Politics. I preached a second message, and this is a very powerful, important message called The Five Epicenters of the Apocalyptic Countdown. Where are the five centers of where all activity will be happening at the time of the end, including the United States of America. One message that it seemed people enjoyed immensely was Jewish festivals concealed in our last year in heaven. You will discover the last year in heaven and its parallels to the festivals of Israel and how the festivals of Israel are actually concealed in the apocalypse. Another message I preached was America, the preview of our end game. And this is where I found the notes of my father that I've looked for for eight years where an angel of God visited him, showing him something that would happen to America in the future. He wouldn't talk about it much publicly, but I felt led to share it with the people during this service and in this conference. Mark Biltz preached on God's Daytimer. He preached a second message called Solomon, a type of Messiah or anti-Messiah. And then Bill Cloud came along and preached on warning, the locusts are coming. Bill preached a second message called It's Open Season on Believers and a third message included in our CD and DVD series, And You Shall Know, Entering the Age of the Messiah. Jonathan Kahn preached on the Shemitah template and began to show us how things were happening related to the Shemitah cycle and what will come in the near future. Now, there are 10 CDs or 10 DVDs in the albums. The CDs are $65 a set. The DVDs are $110 a set for, for your donation of that or more. And the CD offer numbers on the screen, 16 PS CD. The DVD offer is 16 PS DVD. You can order online at perrystone.org. You can call our office or the 888-21-BREAD number or Perrystone PO Box 3595, Cleveland, Tennessee, 37320. This series from the International Summit is for those who want to know and desire to stay informed concerning the Word of the Lord for these times and seasons. Once again, CDs and DVDs, 
unedited, uncut. On TV, you only see about 22 minute clip. These are messages that are 60 to 70 minutes long. I want you to hear the entire message that I preach and not just a clip because the main meat of the message is later on into it and we have to edit certain things out of the television program. Get the unedited version right now of our CDs and DVDs. We're looking forward to hearing from you today. All right, this is part three of a four-part series that we're doing on addiction. Now, I do realize that some of the things I'm going to be sharing with people, people are going to consider it controversial to some extent. But I just want to say to you that Paul taught in the Bible that we should be filled and controlled by the Holy Spirit. And I believe that when we as believers look to other substances to help us uh, uh, get up, you know, get going, get up, or just to get high, whatever the case is, we're just saying that Jesus is not enough. We should never have to follow the patterns of the world and the things people do in the world because Jesus is enough. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit is enough. And that's really my emphasis on what we're teaching you uh, in this addiction series, that you just need the power of the Holy Spirit in your life to sustain you, to keep you, to motivate you, to keep you strong and healthy and, and that type of thing as well. But I do hope you do receive the Word of the Lord. I do know when I do this kind of preaching on Manifest, we do get emails, well, we're not supporting you anymore, well, we don't like you anymore, blah, 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 blah. So we always lose people because of uh, the stands sometimes that we take. But you know, the Lord will always speak to one person somewhere that'll take up that slack. And so we just trust the Lord with all that we do is what I'm trying to say. Don't forget the prophetic summit. Now you're gonna have uh, just this week and next week, and that's gonna be the end of the offer. So please get that. All right, we're looking forward to coming to Pastor Bob Rogers Church, Evangel World Prayer Center, Louisville, Kentucky, July 14th and 17th. Also, Remnant's gonna be coming on the weekend to minister. That's our youth group. Can't wait for them to join me. And we're gonna have, a, we're gonna have like seven or eight services in like four days. So you come and be a part of that. Summer Reformation in Cleveland, Tennessee is coming up Friday through Sunday, July 22nd through the 24th. This will be at the OCI Center. There's no fee to attend, but we do need you to register with yourself or your youth group at OCIMinistries.org under Reformation because we have to plan for how many are coming. It's going to be a great, great Friday, Saturday, and Sunday morning there. Uh, Griffin First Assembly of God, Pastor Randy Valamont, we're coming back there Friday night. Notice this now, Friday night through Sunday night, and that'll be Friday at 7, Saturday 10 and 6, Sunday 8, 30, 10, 45 and 6, and that's in Griffin, Georgia. So all you folks who've not been there for a while, this is your time to come out in that area to be a part of the great move of God that God is sending. Willis, Texas, of course, we're coming there, and then we're coming uh, to Family Faith Church in Huntsville. That's on the screen, Cross Temple, Huntington, West Virginia. And just real quick, Conway, Arkansas, Church Alive, uh, we're coming there, and we're coming to uh, Victory Christian Center. This will be in the month of September, by the way. Faith Life Church in New Albany, Ohio. Got some great things planned. And I just want to make mention again, I don't want to sound repetitious, but our main event in the month of October is being planned. Go to perrystone.org and follow us on Perry Stone Ministries Facebook. Perry Stone Ministries, there's only one. And uh, we appreciate that. And also on Periscope, you can keep up with us that way. See you next week. This summer at OCI is a time for freedom. Perry Stone invites you to join us in Cleveland, Tennessee, July 22nd through 24th for a weekend of releasing hope and purpose to a generation overcome by fear and depression. Come hear empowering words from Perry Stone, Karen Wheaton, Chad Daniel, and Casey Doss with worship from Clay Webb, First Hearts, Chosen, and Remnant Dance Team. Register free online at OCIMinistries.org. Find your freedom at Summer Reformation 2016. We'll see you there. Perry Stone invites you to join him for his 2016 Israel tour. The dates are November 21st through the 30th with an optional visit to Petra in the country of Jordan. For more information and how to register, call 1-888-321-3629 or visit perrystone.org. Seating is limited, so call today.